everybody. Welcome back to uh, Cape Rugby TV. It's Wednesday night. It's live. It's nice to have you back. And hopefully tonight we've got rid of the gremlins. It's going to be an exciting night of rugby, talking all about uh, club rugby and Western Province rugby in Cape Town. Right here in your hometown and uh, where no better place to be but in the heart of Cape Town. The weather has been a little bit up and down, but still lovely to be in Cape Town. And of course, lovely to be on Cape Town TV. My esteemed panel this evening, Mr. Herman Abrams. How are you doing, Mr. H? I'm fine, JP. Fine. You look like you're in a good mood. Yeah, I'm normally in a good mood. Nothing mm -hmm. stops me. I'm going to stay on the protocol process here. The president of NNK, Francois Bontes. Nice to have you, Bonte. Thank you, JP. Nice to be here. Not that you're a stranger to the show. So. Yeah, I've been here once or twice before, yeah. Yeah, lekker. And of course, Morgan Newman. How's it, JP? Good. Yeah, good, good to be back. You had a cancellation today. Yeah, we did. I think Tigerberg um, had a rough weekend on Saturday, so couldn't field enough players. Apparently, too many injuries or something. So, yeah, just good to be on the positive side. I'm good to be back on Cape Rugby TV, I guess. Well, I mean, I can't really blame them. I mean, I don't know what it is with you universities that you've got to play all these midweek games, you know. Normal people play rugby either on a Saturday or on a Sunday. But of course, <laughs> the universities and some other clubs have to bugger up the whole system. Um, but nevertheless, I'm not going to hold you personally responsible for it. <laughs> Please don't. Uh, <laughs> I was a game last week. You, uh, you looked like you came out on the back end of a bulldozer. That no, no, yeah. wasn't too bad. Eh? James Forsberg ruffled us up a little bit. But yeah, yeah it's good to get a positive result. Yeah. Went up 31-10, I think, in the end. So, yeah, but it's never easier to go down to Force Bay there and Brooks, um, Brookside at... Um, Philip Epstein. Um, in Constantia, it's never easier to go down there and, and get a result. So, yeah, we're very happy with that. No, well, that's excellent. Um, it's nice to see, of course, that uh, you guys are doing so well. I think it's uh, a lot of clubs actually aspire to, to the Marty's performance. Um, a lot of clubs jealous of Marty's and their performance, <laughs> but nevertheless still uh, um, uh, aspire to... to to play um, like Marty's do, and um, for obviously for, for good reason. Let's quickly look at the uh, Super 15 results then. Um, uh, those of you that uh, had a chance to catch up with Super 15 results, um, please don't ask us about Super Brew. It's been an absolute disaster. <laughs> I don't know how on earth I actually went flying down there. I, I don't understand that I get close and I just go down. The Crusaders 15 11 over the Reds. Mr. H, you picked that one, eh? Yeah. Uh, the Cheetahs 17 13 over the force. Uh, um, Morgs, how did you go on that one? I actually backed the Cheetahs, Jeps. You backed the Cheetahs, yeah, eh? yeah, for, for good reason. The Sharks and the so. Highlanders, um, Bonte, the Sharks doing a little bit up and down, eh? Yeah, well, okay, though. As long as you win your home games, it's important. Um, and they say if you, if you can win the bad games, yeah. it's, it's good. Yeah. They can only get better. They only yeah. get better. The Brumbies and the Waratahs, 23 points to 6. It was a good win for them. The Chiefs uh, going uh, up over the Lions. I actually, Mr. H, expected a bigger win for the Chiefs. Uh, yeah. You know? Maybe Sonny <laughs> Bull is uh, losing a bit of his spark. <laughs> Not the man he used to be. Uh, back in his heyday. He's probably concentrating more on his boxing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And the Rebels um, giving the Bulls a run for their money. They're going out of the wire there, 41-35. That was an interesting game. Yeah. Very interesting. I know. That was what the con that cost me. That was yeah. the big one. You know? <laughs> that one it was, it yeah. was a good one for the Bulls to win their first away game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I, that's, uh, that was the thing. Mm. As I thought, you know, Bulls going away and the Rebels have to come good yeah. at some stage. Yeah. I really didn't think they would do it. I mean, that yeah, was a good one. Yeah. You know, what do you make of that point line, though? I mean, there's a lot of points scored in that game. Uh, what, 70, well, 76 points? Well, they did mention after the game they have to jack up their defence. I mean, you know, you might get away with the games for force, but to the other sides on tour, they're going to, they're yeah. going to hurt you. So yeah. I'm sure they're going to work on that. And of course, the Hurricanes are beating the Blues, uh, 35 points to 19, so not easy there. Um, the Bulls are, of course, now on top of the South African Conference log. Um, uh, Sharks, uh, at least the Stormers in the second place on 41 points. In the Australian Conference, it's the Brumbies on 35, the Reds on 26, and the Chiefs are on 44, while the Crusaders are on 37 in the, in the New Zealand Conference. On the overall conference, the Chiefs are now top of the log on 44 points. For the Bulls, the Brumbies and the Stormers, Following there, of course, the Bulls seem to be clawing their way back up. But now, of course, we have to remember that uh, the Storms had uh, a buyer somewhere along the line, so they've got a catch-up game. But so do the Bulls, actually. So they both played nine games. Uh, Storms are now not the top of the conference long anymore. Points, do you think they can come back? Yes, they can. I mean, um, the Bulls have got three away games, yeah. which is not easy. Yeah. And we've the Storms have toured, and they're back, um, and they're doing well. Mm. But the boring fact is... They haven't picked up a lot of bonus points, so somehow we have to come right somewhere and score tries. So um, 
Yeah, yeah. So I hope, it, I hope it happens on Saturday. Well, hopefully it does. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's what everybody's looking for is is, is, a, is a good win for the for yeah. the Stormers. Um, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Uh, of course, the Stormers are playing against uh, the Cheetahs at Newlands this weekend. It's going to be a it's going to be a humdinger of a match, and I think uh, everybody's very keen to see the the Stormers back in the mix. Of course, uh, the sports nutrition supplier to the uh, DHL Stormers is Evox Advanced Nutrition. Evox is uh, one of the club rugby sponsors, supplier to uh, Western Brothers Rugby, and of course, a supplier to the DHL Stormers. Now, you can win for yourself an Evox pack, as we normally give away, courtesy of Evox. This is the recovery product. We've said this is very important, most important product of the whole bunch. In actual fact, that's what uh, most people are are focusing on now is, is recovery. Then we'll have the meal replacement. The meal replacement is a primary to get that protein in. If you want to keep on the weight during the season, as we've heard Morgan say a few times, you've absolutely got to make sure you've got your protein coming in. And then finally, of course, we've got a creatine for you. A little creatine to throw in there to just pack on a little bit of extra muscle power. Now, last week's winner of the Evox um, pack was, of course, Willy Engelbrecht. I think he's come back off his cycling days and uh, he's now started to take on, <laughs> take on rugby. <laughs> now you want to win for yourself this rugby pack, all you need to do is SMS the word EVOX, in other words the official supplier to Western Bronze Rugby, to 33280. And um, Morgz, I mean we were out today looking at some of the school kids with part of the VUCA rugby. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, they, mistakes you know about the VUCA rugby guys, Dale yeah. Santon and, and yeah. Mike Barr and the guys, part of the Legends yeah, group. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're doing amazing stuff. Born, you, you seem to know about them as well? Yes, I mean, they uh, get ex-players involved from time to time. I know yeah. I went to Wine Big Boys Eye once, and it's, they're doing yeah. ex- good work. But now, the thing that Excellent. we noticed about some of the, those, those schools, because we're talking about school kids, yeah, yes. and, and they, you know, they all come from previously disadvantaged areas. And the, the, the big thing that Morgan and I commented on afterwards is, you know, I mean, the skills that the guys had, I was really super impressed. I mean, the skills that, they, that these youngsters had playing from... Kensington and Harold Cressy and a couple of the schools like Danoon, um, you know, some of the schools, the hand skills was great, the running skills, but they just don't have the size. They're physically, Mr. H, they're undernourished. <laughs> they need Evox. Yeah. They, they need Evox, but, but I mean, of course, before you even look at a supplement, yeah. folks, before you even worry about any of this <laughs> stuff, you've got to start eating properly at home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mr. H, are we, are, do you think we're going to be able to change this? Morgan, we, we, was, we were talking about this in the car, and he was saying, like, how do we change this? How do we get moms and dads to start feeding their kids properly. I mean, they, they can't afford it necessarily. Yeah. Shopping is bad. We still buy white bread, which is not great. We eat mainly starch and carbohydrates. We, we, I mean, who can you do that? It's a long uphill battle. I mean, if you heard today, 25% of people are unemployed. unemployed yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's where yeah. it is. Look, that's it. Well, hopefully we can get some sponsors, more sponsors in on the union side. The union can uh, get some sponsors in and the clubs, if you, the clubs, can start using the fact that you've got television and can start uh, bringing in sponsors at your club, you should be able to fund some uh, nutrition, uh, maybe some nutrition plans, lectures, maybe moms and dads, groceries, whatever you can to feed the kids. Of course, look after those, that youth then. So anyway, as a little bit of a contribution to you. You want to uh, put yourself in the mix to win an Evox uh, rugby pack? Just SMS the word Evox and your name to double three two eight zero double three two eight zero. We're going to take an ad break, and when we come back, we'll start taking a look at some of the club rugby fixtures that are coming up, or at least we'll start off with the club rugby results. It was a humdinger of a couple of days. Finally, the club rugby is back in the mix. Uh, we'll take an ad break. We'll be back with you guys in a sec. We're back here on Cape Rugby Live, and uh, of course, uh, now time for us to look at some of the fixtures here. Super League A. Um, now, this Bonti, this is where your uh, expertise comes into the mix, you know. Oh, we had, um, see if I can help you. Yeah, well, well uh, okay, let, let's take a look at this. Let's start off with uh, Vixen UCT, 15 um, all. Um, would you have expected a draw there between those two teams? Vix UCT. Vix mm. UCT, yeah. Did they play? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the result over the week. Well, you know, they, I think they play a similar type of brand of rugby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, both like run the ball. Mm. Um, UCT have been struggling uh, in varsity cup, and I think they picked a couple of injuries, and some of their guys moved to the Vodacom. Yeah. So I don't think they got the depth that they used to have. Yeah. So and, and the Vicks are always an unpredictable side. Uh, they're yeah. always going to be there, there about. We had John Dobson on the show a, a few weeks ago, and he was saying that quite often they come out of the varsity cup, and the first game or two is not that easy. 
Yeah. Well, you know, it's a tough Varsity Cup that they play in. Yeah. And you're going to pick up a couple of injuries as well. And mm. I think maybe that's what's happened to them. And also then, uh, if I believe you must help me here, yeah, some guys uh, maybe leave after Varsity Cup as well. So I don't think that's happened to them as well this year. I'm not quite sure. Mm. But yeah, that normally I, 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 happens I, I think as, it, as well. Yes, I think it did happen at some of the universities, yeah. and some of the universities then also went a step further and got wrapped over the knuckles because they were uh, fielding more uh, non-students. <laughs> so, yeah. Mistakes, that's right. Yeah. You, you have yeah. to have a certain amount of students. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to play in the Varsity Cup... They should all be students. They should all be yeah. students. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that this Varsity Cup has been not good for club rugby. It's called a... It's called a division, as far as I'm concerned. And heavens above, oh well, slay me down for saying the Varsity Cup's not a great thing. But if you're playing in the Varsity Cup and you're reaping all the benefits and getting all the money and getting on TV, well, great for you. Um, but of course, now Club Rugby's also on getting on TV. We just need to get the money side of it. <laughs> but we're getting there. Um, Durbel against SK Warmers. Uh, Mr. H. SK Warmers can't be happy about this. No, I think, I think they are in trouble. Are they in trouble? I think they're in trouble. They, they haven't fielded an under-20 side for three weeks. Yeah. What does that show? There's no growth in the club. This guy, so, something, something must be done. They will have to, you know, yeah. they'll have to get there. Yeah. You see, but what maybe it's also the problem. Look, it's a very uh, competitive competition the, uh, in, in, in Cape Town. Club rugby is very competitive. and. Every club wants to be competitive, and maybe what they've done is brought a couple of guys from outside, which maybe has dented the, the community feeling. The mm. ends on the 20s, they not can't feel on the 20s side. Um, maybe they should start looking more community-based then. But is this not one of the traps that we see some of the Super League A clubs uh, fall into? Is that they become reliant on their first team, their second team, and they think life revolves around playing in Super League A on the first team, and then they forget to start knocking on the doors of the schools and the neighbourhoods. They don't recruit enough. They don't create enough excitement. Is this not? Is it, this seems to be a, one of the one of the problems? Is that when you don't have a large community environment mm. around you, you need to go recruiting. Yeah, it is tough. I mean, you remember you got Hammies in that same area as well. So you got two clubs vying for all the schools. But system would be okay from youth all the way through. Yeah, but they obviously got a bit of money and they can plough the money into bus the people in or have yeah. coaching clinics and yes, stuff like yes. that. Because if you look at the schools in those areas, they're not very rugby playing schools. Yeah. So. But how's it going at NNK? No, it's, it's going to be going okay. No You've problems. got two hundred twenty. We've got two hundred twenty side. They... But so why is it that you can have so many teams and? So many people wanting to play rugby in your area and and play for NNK. Well, it's not easy. It's not easy. I, and you speak to most clubs. The most of them are struggling with with under twenty sides because yeah. firstly they, they either go overseas or they stop playing and they want to go party with their friends or have weekends off. Um, we do other things, and I don't want to give the ideas to other clubs what we're doing. But it's a lot of them are not from the local community. But if that I, I can if tell I, you. I mean, if I look at the clubs that have had success in terms of attracting players, it's the clubs that have made an effort to, they've put out, and we've, we've beaten this drum to death, they've put yeah. out the newsletters, they've gone door knocking, they go to moms and dads who used to play for the club and said, bring your kids, they do the poiki course, they do the bri flace, I mean, they don't do the spit bri, I mean, some of them, although, yeah, I, do, I, yeah. I, I must say, Brackenfell had a spit bri there yeah. when we were there. But I mean, they, and some of them even do jumping castles. That's but the key, key. <laughs> <laughs> to it all. Jumping castles. It's for the juniors. <laughs> for the juniors. Mr. H has got this thing about jumping castles. I swear when well, it's his birthday, next time you know, jumping castle. <laughs> and he'll sleep in his garden all night long. Let's look at some of the other results there as we just spoke. Hamilton's had a good win for uh, um, uh, over the weekend, or at least uh, last week. Of course, they were Wednesday and, and Saturday yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it was a bit yeah, of a mix. Yeah. Uh, Hamilton's beating Vix then, um, or losing to Vix. Losing to Vix. Uh, yeah, 21 18. Uh, and, and, and tough game there. Um, uh, Marty's 31 uh, 10. Uh, Morgs over False Bay. We might as well ask the first hand comment here. Yeah? That was also a win, was that on win? No, it was on Saturday. Yeah, it was a Saturday, Saturday game. Saturday. Saturday. So it was a bit of a bruiser. False Bay, give you a hard time. Yeah, I think you, I mean, my face um, shows a bit of uh, the bruises that we took. Yeah. But look, obviously, I think the result, I mean, in the end, I think we scored one or two, one or two quick tries, which, which sort of you know, made the result a little bit bigger than, than it actually was. But obviously, like I said, it's not easy to go under Constantia and get a result. So yeah, we've very chuffed to, have to walk away with five points over there. Do you think False Bay should feel proud of their effort? I mean, they've had a change of coach. They also have to work really hard to, to, to bring and recruit players. Uh, no, James, I think, I mean, to be brutally honest, uh, by the support that False Bay had in Constantia um, last Saturday, 
It definitely shows that there's something happening in the region in terms of, of support and, and, and guys wanting to play for the union. You mean a lot, the there were a lot the, of fans? Yeah, a well, lot, of, lot of supporters. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it shows that guys obviously wanting to play for False Bay and they're creating a good family environment. So and I they obviously weren't there to watch Marty's. They came to watch False Bay. Well, we... we, we <laughs> 10 10 percent, 10 percent, 10 percent. We bust some of our own, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, look, when, uh, when the ref made one or, two, um, one or two decisions, I don't think the, the, the fans were too happy with it. So the show showed they were definitely the fans are never happy when the ref They know the rules. They know the rules. <laughs> I mean, I saw at the VUCA rugby today, I saw a 16-year-old kid Expl explaining to the referee why the ball was not held up. And, the well, <laughs> and he, he sort least, of gave him a bit of a lecture. Well, at least he didn't hit him with a head. Like <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, that's what in Cape Town. That, that happens Cape up Town. north, you know. <laughs> and, you know, what, we must be careful that we don't uh, paint our kids in the Western Cape mm. with the same brush yeah. as the steroid young, using youngsters in, in, in the Transvaal. <laughs> I mean, win it's abundant. All, win at all costs. Stuff win at all costs. I mean, you go to, school, it's not that ridiculous. I've ever been there, but I've heard the story. You go to Sun City during the school holidays and there's 15-year-old kids that look like they could be um, <laughs> uh, in the Mr. Olympia bodybuilding competition. <laughs> that does happen. Uh, but it, 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 we can't paint this. We, we seem to have a much more relaxed uh, uh, youth structure here. I mean, I know that when, as we, we, we said last week, we had some audio <coughs> difficulties last week, so I'm going to say it again. But we said last week that <laughs> um, the, the, the kid headbutted the referee in, um, in the northern province somewhere, and the Western Province Rugby Union got blamed for it. <laughs> <laughs> Your discipline is obviously not working in this case. The kid uh, was born here. He was born here. <laughs> yes, he was, yeah. yeah, but let's look at some of the other results in Belhart Tigerberg. Now, I was with Peter Yost over the weekend, uh, Mr. H, uh, and, and we, the, of course, you guys were at City Park. Yeah. We got the result. We were all watching it on Twitter, and the, the result came in that Tigerberg had won by one point. And for what I understand, it was an injury time and Tigerberg um, Lost. dropped the ball or something. Huge derby, huge derby. Big derby, yeah? Yeah, well, uh, they, I heard last night that there were 6,725 people that paid to get inside. 6,700 fans at a uh, Bellard Tigerberg game yeah. Yeah. On, uh, on a Saturday. Yeah. I mean, there you go, folks. If you've got any more questions about whether or not there's a life in club rugby and if you're sitting in super league a and you're thinking oh well club rugby's dying do yourself a favor and go and watch the match between bell and tigerberg six and a half thousand people yeah, lots. i think it's uh, in some cases more than we've had some of the vodacom cup games at newlands <laughs> yeah. Yeah. or anywhere or anywhere yeah. for that matter but um yeah no well well done then to bell um, starting to, it, it looks like they're starting to feel their their uh, roots now a little bit in Super League. Well, look, they were there last year already, so it's not a new thing for them. And I think they've uh, beefed up their pack a little bit as well this year, so they it's not nothing new to them. Yeah. And it was a good win for them. And now Tigerberg and uh, got problems. Tigerberg's now in the same shoes that Bella were in last uh, year. Last they're, season. They're yeah. going to have to. And I mean, the, the game was cancelled tonight. What, from what I understand, they had a couple of injuries. Too difficult to feel the feel. Uh, uh, I mean, the Wednesday games is difficult. People are working. It's late. You can't kick off at nine o'clock, really, Mr. H. I mean, I think you being from the union, you should take this matter up and and, and have, have oh, words with people about it. We've had quite a, a number of requests that we must change that time. Yeah. The only way we can change the time is the clubs would play on the third and the second team, mm. perhaps on a during the week. You know, earlier. Because that's or, of course or, why you kick off at nine o'clock. Yeah. Is because you have the third team yeah. start at half past <coughs> six or something, so, yeah. and then the second team, and then the yeah. last yeah. team has to kick off at nine o'clock. But I mean, that's very difficult for people. I mean, it's amateur rugby. You got a yeah, day you, job. Is you got to travel. You, you can only play at fields that have got lights. If you, if you come from Stellenbosch, to yeah. play against Hamilton. Yes. And you kick off at nine o'clock. Just yeah. imagine when you get back to Stellenbosch. Yeah, it's Especially if you still want to go. But some people to the don't bar. get back. They get back the next day. I know. <laughs> that, that's why they call Wednesday. <laughs> that's why they call Wednesday rugby divorce rugby. <laughs> I bet Stellenbosch are upset. Not Stellenbosch. Not Stellenbosch. No, there's no, no, there's no go, reason. We go, we go straight to bed after the game. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's the worst. No, that's the worst. Uh, let's look at the results now in Super League B. It's been a very exciting week. Elberg uh, uh, 35, uh, is that right? 35-0 over Hansel yeah. Hearts? 
Helderberg. Yeah, that's a cracker of a result for Helderberg, but Helderberg and everybody thought the wheels had come off for Helderberg, they got relegated, and what quite often, often happens is, you know, you get knocked down mm. and it's a question of can you jump back up? And sometimes we, we see clubs lose their spirit, but clearly they've dug in the heels and they said, okay, well, we're gonna fight to stay at the top. I mean, Boynton, they, you've played against Helderberg, you know what they're like. Um, look, look, Helderberg over the years, they're always a steady side, you know it's gonna be a hard game, even yeah. if they lose, it's close, and you know you've had a hard game, but luckily the petrol price has gone up, so the guys can't leave stranded, I'd go somewhere else. <laughs> so no, look, they've got a big area which they can draw from. <laughs> you mean they'd be bought? <laughs> yeah, they'd be bought, but the petrol price is... is they've got is, some breakers yeah, out okay, there. Yeah. And it's a big area that yeah. they service, so... Um, yeah, yeah. And they're doing, they're doing hard work behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, um, Ricky's back there and both Kuman and stuff, so they've kept the nucleus on their side. Well, that's excellent stuff. You know, Collegians, of course, uh, beating Brackenfell by just one point. Mr. H, that's too, that's too close to call. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's a great result for Collegians. Yeah? You yeah. Know. Well, that was at Collegians, correct? Yeah. That's yeah, always that tough there. Always, always tough, tough there. there. So Brackenfell actually did well to get in close, nearly pull off a victory there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. I Very must, tough. Uh, I must say, uh, we watched... Um, Collegians play against Primrose in the opening game, mm. and uh, we've watched a few other games yeah. there. And, and it's tough. Lentech is tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Anyway, we, we, I was just thinking about the situation there. Is that you know, there's another, there's, there's another club that that can pull fans. You know, but uh, mm. I think that uh, I'd like to see government and council get involved with um, supporting properties uh, with, with with you know stands Upgrading. places. Places for people to sit and upgrading facilities. But also maybe just in that area. I mean, uh, how many clubs have you got in that area? If they do something just to combine those clubs, that strong one or two clubs are going to be. But now you've got about five, six hundred. No, they've right? only got two clubs. Two clubs. Which was playing United's out there. Just no, make one oh, mega they, club. They've they'll been be, suspended. They'll be good. Yeah, yeah. So maybe Rockland. something Rockland, must be yeah. done behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. But we need, for people to come to a game and enjoy the game and sit down and watch the ga and game and pay gate fees, you need to give them a seat. Yeah. And I also noticed something, and I'm going to get to this in a second. Actually, in fact, I might as well talk about it now. What I noticed, um, and this week, and we're going to show some highlights in a minute, of um, Caledonian Roses up against uh, Perseverance. That was, was where we filmed this week. But again, what we saw was um, <coughs> spectators running onto the field. Um, you know, if they felt that... Or, or, or maybe not, you know, not even if they're not running on the field, but you know, when you're trying to watch the game, you're standing on the side of the line, you tend to sort of lean over the line, mm -hmm. and then the guy in front of you, he goes a bit further, and then the guy, eventually there's like this whole triangle of people leaning over there, and then they run back beyond the white line. And the fact is that if you get people in a seat, that would control problems like that. Born, I mean, you've Look, got, you are a grandstand. No, so no, I'd be problem. lucky because that was built many years ago, but it's all, all go, it comes down to, uh, Money restraints and yeah. finances mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But I just want to ask Mr. H, wasn't there a ruling or clubs asked to fence off the field and stuff like that to keep yes. the people off the field? And, and stuff we like supplied the, the, the rope and everything. But I think that a lot of those clubs, those things have just been stolen, disappeared. Catching fish with it. Well, <laughs> I mean, but there, there, must be, there must be something done about that. And we'll go into that. Because in Bulan, for instance, you can't play rugby if your field is not enclosed. Right. The, the, the rugby yeah, yeah. I mean, field is not enclosed. Obviously, after that incident yeah. a couple yeah. of years ago, I, I mean... Yeah, uh, the, what are uh, we talking about? It's not, not, not the real Lewis. Real Lewis. Lewis. In our, Rian Lewis, in uh, our province... Uh, deli delicious or yeah. uh, cereal? In our province, the city must come to the party and upgrade those facilities. Yeah. Those people out there at Lentechia and at Menenberg and at Mole Avenue, they all pay rates. Yeah, Why right. must they go to a facility, you know, it's like a, a, a grazing right. field? Well, I don't, I mean, I actually spoke to Kasim Jabbar uh, on, the, on the day and I said to him, Why? What's going, what's going on here? Why is the, you know, he, he said they actually f uh, got and built the Viber Creek fence themselves. They did this themselves. He says he laid the, I said, um, because I know that they had to move the game at the last minute. I said, who laid the white lines? Because it's a council property. Mm -hmm. The council's supposed to lay the white lines. And he said, no, he laid it himself. Uh, you know, it wasn't the greatest of white lines. Better than those black lines we saw in the Bulls game, though. So, um, Kasim, <laughs> if you ever need a job, you can get to the Bulls. They can, <laughs> you can definitely but, 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 do a better job than they do. The, but I asked him, who's the councillor? And the councillor in the area really hasn't been, uh, let's say, forthcoming in yeah. terms of supporting the, the club. Proactive. Yeah. You look, the slogan of the city is the city works for you. So, 
But besides that, is <laughs> the perception out there is the rugby clubs are like a burden or whatever. And what are we doing? We're providing a service to the community. Yeah. Yeah. And the rugby officials are doing it for the love of the game. Yeah. We're not getting a cent out of it. Yeah. In fact, it takes a lot of our spare time and stuff like that. So all we ask is, council, just help us. We're mm. doing lots of hard work to keep the streets, the, uh, the children off the streets, educate them, bring them to a nice environment, and we bus it in children from other areas. You know, more importantly, we vote them in. You know, next time you uh, look at the well, next time is the time to vote. Go take a look at your facilities. Walk up and down the road. Check if there's fencing. Check if there's line markers. Check if you've got grandstand. Is the electricity working? Are there potholes? Then you make your vote. Right, let's take a look at the rest of the results here. But we're going to find out that councillor's name for that uh, works uh, in the area of Caledonian Roses. Ons kom vir jou jag, meneer. Ons papa wacht vir jou. Right. Um, <laughs> but the fact is, you know, <laughs> while on that topic, I mean, I speak to lots of clubs in different, different areas. There never seems to be money anywhere. For well, anything, it, it, it um, needs to be done. Well, it, it's up to the clubs to, to start making an effort. I mean, uh, we, we do know that. There's never going to be any handouts. There's not going to be multi-million dollar grants. What we've got for you is you've got to go to market. You've got a club with a database of people. You've got to go to market and get sponsors. Neville's was the sponsors of Caledonian Roses. And we then filmed in front of Neville's. We gave that sponsor TV highlights. And Mr. H. Ba oh, Kasim Jabbar, by the way, Kelly's jersey is up there, and there's the sponsor's name. It says Neville's on there. All right, Mr. H., he told me he gave you the wrong jersey. Uh, no. but there you go. TV exposure for these guys. Yeah, look at some of these. There's Asla, of course, uh, the sponsor of Solarians. Um, Civil's the sponsor of Villagers. We've got Busy Bees. They've got Boylant Marketing. Um, Jordan and ML Pan Panel Beaters. Look at all these sponsors, guys. You need to go to these sponsors and say, we've got TV for you now. Put more of them on your jersey. Put more branding up around the side of your field. But what it does, it takes one person at your club to get off your backside and go knock on doors and say, you're going to be on TV. Anyway, if you needed more Not advice on that, why don't you attend those seminars at Western Province and uh, find out more about how to get sponsorship, how to create media, get exposure. And of course, uh, well, anyway, we'll touch more base on that a little bit later. But the Twitter feed this weekend went again to another level. Mr. H, I mean, it, it, was, it was absolutely incredible. Um, we were all standing around the field at Perseverance Caledonians, and people were all standing around me, and we were talking about this, watch, and we were watching the Twitter feed, and we were talking about the scores from all the different clubs. We didn't just know what mm. the score was. Mm. It, it was like watching live. We knew what the halftime score, mm. the 10-minute score, and Marty's was up, and NK was down, and then the Kelly's was up, and you were SMSing yeah, me like old school, you know, when you should have been... Other results then, of course, Collegians and Brackenfell, 23-22 um, uh, uh, over Brackenfell. Primrose um, losing by one point to Balfour, Peniel Villages. Oh, big win for NNK, 21-3 mm. over uh, Peniel Villages. Congratulations, boy. Tough game? Yeah, yeah, it's not such a good win. You didn't get a bonus point. All right, and, you should have uh, worked harder, eh? And you yeah. see Haldeberg are getting bonus points. We're falling behind, but <gasps> still a long way to go. Well, it's, it's two up, be two out, two uh. down. <laughs> so you can afford, of course, Kells River um, are up against Hands and Hearts this weekend. Mr. H, is that the game we're covering? Kells yeah. River, Kells River, Hands and Hearts at Aikendal. Is that right? Yeah. At Hands and Hearts. So Hands and Hearts fans, we're coming to you this weekend. We're going to watch you and Kales River battle it out. All right, Cape Rugby TV is going to be there this Saturday. Make sure you tell all your fans and make sure that your data is up to date. In other words, is, have you updated the players? Uh, both teams. Otherwise, we might go to watch um, Scott Steen and UWC. I know Gerald Brock has been asking me to come out. Sorry, Gerald. We've had this one allocated. And uh, we're going to have to go through there. Let's quickly look then at uh, Division 1. Silverleaf, 21-19 um, over the Strand. Raithby Universal is a good win for them over Young Stars. Northerns, 11-9 um, over, um, uh, or at least going down to Hamadiaz. Borland Mark uh, beating Young Wesley's there. Uh, you can see 20 over 8. Uh, Rocklands losing to Bannenberg Rangers, 3-8. Uh, eight. Kyle Moore, 8-9. Eight, Lost for them against Atlantis. Uh, Blue Stars had a win, um, Blue Jets had a win, Watsonia had a win, and of course Violets had a win over Gardens Tech. In uh, Division 3, it was Young Ideas, 18-3 over Retief. And the game that we went to watch was Perseverance against Caledonian Roses. It was 10-3. 
at least at one stage, <laughs> and then it turned into 10-6. We managed to uh, catch some of the highlights of the match between uh, Caledonian Roses and uh, Perseverance, and uh, let's see what happened out there. Come on, Bucci, come on, Bucci! Did you ever used to say that in his hands? Come on, Bucci, come on, Bucci! <laughs> Yes, I can. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, a uh, good result in, uh, for, for Caledonian uh, Roses. Yeah. Um, were, I must say, Mr. Ajou, it was a little bit messy. I mean, the skills need to improve. But both coaches actually acknowledge that they need to train a little bit harder, get things together. And uh, the guys are saying they need to get the guys to practice, huh? Yeah, I think that's the main problem at that level. Yeah. That you get 20 people uh, on Tuesday and another... And you get 10 on a, on a, on a Thursday. Thursday. Like of course, you need day. consistency. We managed to catch up, first of all, with the losing coach and captain. Let's hear what they had to say. Uh, Munib, tough game today. Didn't quite go the way that you wanted, though, eh? No, we always knew that Kelly is going to be the fitter team on the day because they've been practicing quite hard. And quite frankly, they deserve it. We need to win this game. Do you think home, game, uh, home ground had a slight advantage today? Little, little, because we normally come here, we like old buddies, neighbours, and we normally come here because the last time we were playing here, we, we did win this game. What's your way forward for the rest of the season? Uh, I just need the guys to pitch up more in the practice, and so we can work more on our moves and manoeuvres. Well, listen, best of luck. I'm sure they're going to start rocking up after they see you on <laughs> they TV. They have to, they have to. I can full pain when you can see it was a tough game for you, ne? Yeah, Kelly was good today. There was a few niggles, but it was a derby. En die beste team het gewen op die dag. Maar Persis was me nog prikkes, baie prikkes. Kelly's was die first op die dag. En geluk vir hulle vir die rest van die seisoen. Dankie. Ek kan sien, jy is aan my groot pijn. Jy wil nou seker, hy is toe gaan en bykie ja. ijs op my been sit. Nee. Ja, ek moet. <laughs> nou, ons gaan net so 20 minuten meer gesels. Ok. <laughs> ek jok dit met jou. Meneer, nee, luister, best wel luck vir die rest van die season. Dankie, man. En good luck, nee. Thank you, Kelly's. He's in a lot of pain, folks. We have to let him go. <laughs> Oh, and there we go, folks. Uh, of course, losing captain and coach, always bitter for the guys to have a loss like that. There's your um, Neville's jersey, right? Neville, you should be happy, very happy. You got a couple of hundred thousand rands worth of TV sponsorship tonight. So we hope you'll put more money into Caledonian Roses. Of course, this is the Caledonian Roses uh, jersey with Neville's on it that Kasim wanted us to show. Now, Kasim, I tell you what, put your club's name on the jersey and I'll put it up on the wall. In the meantime, Neville's going to have to wait a little bit longer. And he's going to have to stick on the wall with Neville's... What does Neville's do anyway? Neville's mobile service. 
Yeah, filming in the background there. Good audio and good uh, um, uh, publicity for you. We caught up with the winning coach and captain. That was, of course, from the Caledonian side. Let's see what they had to say. Um, Noor, uh, heb je meer de results vandaag? Ja, ik was dus gelukkig, maar ik was bij je gelukkig met die, met die result. Ik was um, praat op mijn bobbymannen. Ja. Uh, hoe te leven hulle gedrag het en hoe hulle gegaan het met die uh, uh, teenstand van, van die, van die, van die, uh, van Persis. En je hebt zeker hierdie uh, soort van uh, teenstand van Persis verwacht vandaag. Hulle het uh, uitgekom, hulle wat het brang. Ja, nee, uh, um, as jy kan sien aan die begin van die wedstrijd, dan, dan uh, kon jy sien, hulle het gekom om te kom. Nie, nou, ek weet nie of dit kon speel of wat, maar hulle het kon kom. <laughs> um, maar as ons nou die al wedstrijd rugby wel gesien het, dan, uh, ek denk graag, dan sal ons hulle groot pakke geet. Um, wie vak voorwoords het het, het later nie, wie sê dat komt hier different uh, interpretation van, van hoe inkom in die rak en hoe die bol gesteel word. Maar, maar hulle het bijgekom in die tweede, dan die second half en, 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 en het goed daar bijgekom. Right, well, best of luck for the rest of the season. Ah, best of luck for the rest of the Shahid, you must be happy with the result today. Yeah, very happy. We knew how um, um, Persis was going to bring it. But second half, we knew if we can get them, beat them at the breakdowns, we could easily get, get to them. It was a little bit like a derby match for you guys. It was a derby and we knew they were going to bring it to us today. And luckily we, we took the points. Rest of the season, you're looking forward to it? We are, we, we, we're going to move up and we want to move up out of the season. So everything the best for, for Persis and for my team, um, all the success and for future. No, well listen, best of luck. I'm sure it's going to go well. You guys look like you've got a great spirit here. Definitely the fans are behind you guys 100%. Yeah, they can themselves maybe a little bit better get drawn, but otherwise it's on our path. Yeah, it's a derby, so you can't blame them. So we, we're just glad they're here. <laughs> no, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, there we go, folks. The tweets are coming in here. Um, we've got some interesting tweets. Uh, Morg, you had a question for me from... I have got a question here from BJ, JP. BJ, what does he want to know? And he wants to know, when will you start to see coaches and Western Province Calgary players as guests on the panel? Well, we do from time to time bring them in. Of course, uh, it's more easy for us to film them outside of uh, the um, uh, studio yeah. environment and then play it in. Because, folks, for those of you that are not so sure about why, why do we do it that way, it's because it's extremely difficult to have one club have an hour's worth of publicity. We try to give all the clubs publicity. And then what it means is if we bring a club on for just five minutes, we actually have to change microphones on and microphones off. And as, as you would all know, I had to spend half an hour of makeup and microphone on these three gentlemen alone. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not enough makeup in the world worked for Morgan Newman tonight. <laughs> not after False Bay got hold of him. A couple of other questions that came in on Twitter. So guys, yes, yeah, sorry, we, 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 we do want to give every club as much publicity as possible. Other things that came in there, um, we forgot to mention the Premier League A results. We're still going to get there. Um, I'm hoping to get there. We've got so many other results, but we wanted to also just focus on some of the divisions there. Um, wow, what a big forward pass coming. That came in from BMZ. I don't know where that came from. Um, oh, it must have been the forward pass in Caledonia Roses, but I think the whistle did blow that. Uh, also, another tweet that says, uh, came in there that says, um, clubs think that mentioning them on TV will bring them sponsors. They're too lazy to do the hard yards. Absolutely 100% right. If you, if you get the mention, it doesn't mean the sponsors are just going to come to you. You've still got to take what you've got and go knock on sponsors' door. And then the final thing here, um, JP, uh, and this is coming in from Zahid, Western Province. Club officials need to nag councillors for services. Um, uh, one team, one spirit did so for the whole of last, I'm assuming, season. I can't see the rest of the tweet. Mr. Ace, is that right? You need to nag the councillors? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Bonte? Yes, yes, absolutely. All right. And Morgs, I'm not going to ask you if you need a, a, a nag councillor because you're too young. I just think you need to go see a councillor. All right? <laughs> and he's, then, he's busy. <laughs> yeah, you need to be, you're busy. Um, and then a final tweet uh, came in here from, also from BMZ. Can we please just get a chef in the studio because JP Nodia can't stop talking about food. Hash spit bri. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we've had some great tweets. And, of course, remember on Saturdays, folks, hash WP Club Rugby. We can all watch the stream coming in uh, live. Okay, so in Premier League A then, uh, just to keep you happy, St. George's. Oh, they lost. Mr. H, your grandfather's old club lost to Rangers, 33-30. Yeah, I see. They're struggling. Yeah, they are struggling a little but bit. But they will, they will get up there again. Okay, all right. Well, it's time for us to take a little... Uh, hang on, in actual fact, before we go to an ad break, 
Um, the Mesa, folks, the Mesa, of course, last week gave away the Mesa Express Slate tablet. I'm going to show you a picture of that tablet that uh, was up for grabs last week. What a prize that was, and Mesa continues to support Cape Rugby. They're, of course, the official supplier to Western Province Rugby. If you want to win yourself a Mesa um, a prize this week, this week it is a, uh, a tablet. All right, last week it was the Mesa keyboard. We're going to put the, the slide up any second now. The Mesa keyboard was uh, won last week by Ridwan Anthony. Congratulations, Ridwan. There you see it. That's your Mesa keyboard computer. And Mesa are throwing in for you a monitor and a mouse as well. So well done, Ridwan. You have won yourself that keyboard. And um, now this week's competition uh, is the Mesa Express Slate tablet. All right. So for those of you that know what an iPad is, which is sort of hijacked the, the name iPad, uh, is, is the popular name that most people will refer to when they're talking about a tablet. Is they'll talk to, this is a, a tablet which is, works very much on the same principles as an iPad. And if you want to win this, um, which has got uh, some fantastic um, specs, all you need to do is tell us who is the official IT supplier to Western Province Rugby in the DHL Stormers and SMS that word. I'll give you a, a clue. The word is Mesa. <laughs> SMS it to double three two eight zero. Double three two eight zero. You can put yourself in the mix to win a Mesa Express Slate tablet. Time for us to take an ad break, and of course, uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, some of the other happenings in and around the world of club rugby, some big matches coming up this weekend, and of course, uh, don't forget your Super Brew predictions a little bit later. Ad break, back in a mo. Welcome back, folks. Uh, it's, of course, Cape Rugby TV Wednesdays live at 9. Nice picture that came in over the week from uh, Scott Steen's under-20 team. Look at the beautiful grass in this photograph. I'm not really sure who sent this picture in, but uh, Scott Steen under-20. Um, boys uh, look like they're full of spirit. And then our next picture, That's again, cool. is uh, from um, the man of the match against... Um, uh, Kelly's, uh, at least Perseverance playing against Kelly's there. Congratulations there um, to Vio, uh, uh, Fayad uh, van Diemen, I think it was. Uh, he won, won for himself courtesy of Tata, a thousand rand man of the match. That is absolutely amazing. Great stuff there. Congratulations. And there you see the legend himself, Kasim Jabbar, in action. Um, Bonti, nice to have a little thousand rand man of the match for the guys, huh? No, it is. It's nice incentive. Yeah. I'm sure you can uh, make use of that. Yeah, you see now, Morgs, if you were playing for Kelly's over the weekend, uh, for Caledonian Roses, you might have stood a chance of winning, making some money there. <laughs> yeah, they could have. Just, we've spoken about this before. I'm waiting for you to come to Stonewash. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd be allowed on the field at Stellenbosch. Um, yeah, I've heard rumors uh, about that too, don't you? Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry about that. I'm not sure if, 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 if your, your club actually wants publicity or TV. They seem to have multi-billion rand sponsors. TV can't, can't be... Let's just leave Marty's alone they for a while. They get a Vossi Cup. They get every, they every get nine the whole nights. ball of wax, yeah. That's why yeah. yeah. we love it, eh, James? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Leisure Hotels is one of our supporters of uh, Cape Rugby TV. Um, if you want to win yourself a night's accommodation, bed and breakfast at Leisure Hotels, all you need to do is SMS the word Leisure to 32010 and you can put yourself in the mix to win uh, a night's accommodation. Last week's winner was Rosalind Fredericks. Congratulations then to Rosalind. Rosalind wins for herself a uh, night's accommodation, bed and breakfast at the Stam Towers. Now, if you want to win yourself that same prize, SMS the word Leisure to 32010. All right. Um, Morgs, uh, how are you guys feeling about it at the moment? I mean, Marty's, of course, we know what you guys can do, but in terms of the season and the time of the year, do you, what, how, how, do, how do the players feel after four or five games? Look, James, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we, we, we were prepared for, for sort of six games in, let's call it 14 days or something like that. So we were prepared for that. And obviously now with Tiger Book pulling out on the weekend, I think, or pulling out this evening, helped them, yeah. I think it helps us for the weekend. So, yeah, we've got a big game on Saturday. I mean, that Saturday. gives you a bit of a rest. It gives us a little bit of a rest. And so, you know, we should, should be fresh for, for Saturday against, yeah. against Durbanville, which should be another tough one. I think they're doing really well this year. But otherwise, I mean, look, we've got a Saturday game and then we've got another following Wednesday game. So, yeah, the games are, are flowing sort of, you know, and the guys are be falling, the, the patterns and things are falling nicely. Falling into place, place yeah. The club, are the clubs mistaken? Are, are we getting feedback? Are they feeling positive? Are they yeah, no, quite a number of clubs are going quite strongly and uh, I'm sure that uh, you know they, they've, the first two weeks always struggle a little bit so now they on they on the road and they 
I'm sure everybody's happy. Yeah, right, folks. Um, it is, of course, now time for us to, to have a look at uh, what's happening in terms of our sponsors. We spoke about the White Line Fever guys earlier on. Color Tone Paints is one of those for, uh, companies that are sponsoring Cape Rugby TV to reach you, to get you some of those white line paints. Every week we give an opportunity to one of uh, the clubs to win for themselves a white line paint hamper marker. It is white line fever time, and if you want to win yourself a white line fever hamper, all you need to do is SMS the word color tone, C-O-L-O-R-T-O-N, to 33280. Last week's winner, congratulations to Cryfontaine. Cryfontaine wins for them a color tone hamper, courtesy of color tone. Remember, those products are available and paint supplies are available at a hardware store near you. It is as easy as that. Right, uh, let's quickly look at the Super uh, 15 um, uh, team for the weekend. The Stormers then, interesting, some interesting happenings here in the Stormers uh, uh, squad. Uh, but uh, the team that has been selected to play against the Cheetahs then over the weekend, Joe Peterson, Gio Aplon, Jean de Jong, of course, uh, Brijan de Villiers is back in the mix as a uh, captain. Brian Abana, Peter Grant, Deval Devenacher, Nizam Carr, Reinhard Elstad, he's back. Sia Khaleesi is back. Andres Becker is back. Ibn Etzebet is back. Brock Harris, Dion Furry, Stephen Kitzel. Mr. H, this is quite a team you're putting on the field, eh? Uh, that's a big team, then. Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me who Jeb Sinclair is. He plays for Canada, number eight. Right. And he's from London Irish. And how he got here, I unfortunately don't know. He must have come by aeroplane <laughs> because if he came by boat, he would, he would probably only have rocked up here uh, yeah. um, in, a, in a long time. I'm, I'm pretty sure... Yeah, so he plays uh, for London Irish, he's a red deer, uh, he's a flank uh, and 1.93 meters and he weighs 111 sure. kilos. I don't know where we found him. That's I don't JP, that's a bit of a tough one, you know, because you've got a guy like uh, Kitsoff that's been in the mix, still in the mix. I just read today he's going overseas to France, now I know why he's going, because you get a total outsider, doesn't have the structures, you're playing free state with the Brousseau playing towards the ball. There's not one feature in that team. It's a, it's a long shot. Apparently, Francois Lowe might be coming back. No, that's, that's no. off the cards. No, is that, that, is that off the cards? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a loss. Yeah. I would have so loved to see Flo back in the mix. Went via Canada now and got this Sinclair. But Maybe if Francois Lowe moves to Canada, we can get him to come <laughs> here. <one day. laughs> I believe his great 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 grandfather was Canadian. Um, no, no, he <laughs> wasn't. The referee on Saturday is Steve Walsh. I know we all love to hate him. But um, or is it a sort of a love-hate relationship? Ten past seven is the kickoff, and there's a curtain raiser. Of course, the Pumas take on the Vodacom team on Saturday, so we want to get down there and get in the mix. Now, time for our Super Brew predictions. Well, yeah, I don't know if you've done any Super Brew, but I'm going to uh, uh, give you a, a wild shot in the dark here if you want to uh, uh, jump yes. in. And I know things haven't been going all that well for for all of us. Uh, Morgs, uh, Blues and Lions. James, I said, give me a second. I said Blues by five. Um, Bonte, you want to take it to go? I'm going to go with the Lions. They have to come right somewhere along the time. The Blues are struggling. I think they've got a bit of hassles in, yeah. their, in their squad. I think the Lions are going to sneak in. Okay, Mr. H, Waratahs, Bulls? Blues. Uh, blues first. Uh, blues? What do you mean Blues? Uh, Lions, what? Blues. He's just moved on. Blues. Oh, yes. Are you going Blues by 12? All right. I'm going for, okay, Waratahs and Bulls, uh, Morgs. Bulls 7, James. Uh, Mr. H? Waratahs. Score? Now you can't be sitting on the five. panel now and work it out. Yeah, you've had your chance <laughs> to work it out. Why <laughs> buff five? You know, mate, what you like? He's back doing four. No, I've said, I've said mine in already. Oh, you've said it in already. Yeah. But you're just trying to remember what it was. I knew that memory was going to go sometime. Eh? <laughs> well, it's <his> bedtime. <laughs> All right, we don't have a lot of time left here. Of course, the Hurricanes take on the Highlanders. The Rebels take on the Crusaders. It's the Sharks take on the Force. Mistakes. Your uh, prediction on the Sharks? Sharks. Sharks. Morgs. Sharks. Sharks, sharks. Always sharks. Sharks. Okay, <laughs> sharks by high. Okay. I'm going sharks by 13. Stormers and cheetahs. Here's the morgues. Stormers by 10. Bonty. Stormers by 6. Prestige. Stormers 10. Stormers by 10. I'm going stormers by 17. The Reds and the Chiefs, your final Ooh. Super 15 game over the weekend. Morgues. Chiefs 5. Chiefs 5. Bonty. Chiefs 12. Chiefs 12. Reds 5. Woo! Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> this is trouble. I'm telling you, there's trouble. What's, on the line side. What's your prediction, JP? My prediction is uh, Chiefs by 7. A good call. I'm staying in the same <laughs> zone. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere near that. Let's quickly look at some of the uh, fixtures that uh, is happening in the world of club rugby. Um, in actual fact, hang on, before we do that, uh, we'll get, we, might, we will uh, next time around. Oh, we've got it here now. Our top ranked uh, on Super Brews, Mr. T. Mr. T has climbed up 
Um, Billy Volker's in second place, Landy, Urban Warrior, Eco. Mr. H, you've dropped out of the top 10. Yeah, for the first hey. time. I'm sorry to Drop hear that. seven places. Drop seven <laughs> places. Don't worry, I dropped 69 places, I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah, my. Anyway, uh, Super League A result, uh, fixtures. Uh, we uh, quickly look at some of the big matches there. Of course, Vic Stike on uh, Belhar. There's a massive match there. It's um, Marty's uh, against um, Durbel over the weekend. UCT take on SK Warmers and um, Tigerberg and Hamilton's. Belleville Collegians, Hands and Hearts against Kales River. That's where we will be at Aikendal this weekend. Make sure you come out. Bring the family, bring the friends, everybody. Hands and Hearts at Aikendal. Come out in your droves. It's going to be fantastic. And we're looking forward to giving one of those players will be winning a thousand rand courtesy of Tata. That's going to be the big one. Would you like to put a prediction on that, Morgs? Hands and Hearts, Kales River? James, I stick my neck out of your hands and hearts, James. Points? Kales River. Kales River? Kales River. Kales River. Kales River. Home ground, hands and hearts, Kells River. <laughs> All right then, moving right along, it's uh, St. George's and Hamlets. There's going to be a big match as well. Also, would you... Uh, would you Ham Hamlets. Hamlets, huh? They will, yeah. They, Hamlets? Yeah, St. George has been struggling this year, seems yeah. to be. Uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and then they like must travel to... And they've got to travel all the way, yeah. To Mamre. Yeah. And uh, to Mamre. Uh, Langa and Paul, Rangers take on young people. Scott Steen and UWC, there's going to be a big match. That was that. That really yeah. is a big match. I know Gerald Brock and the guys are do, doing some fantastic work there, promoting the, the club. Um, uh, UWC do not have the Varsity Cup players playing for them in no, this. They're still unbeaten. And uh, yeah, you want to take a shot in that? UWC Scott Dean. UWC. UWC Mullerton <laughs> and Franschuk. It's Macassar take on Easter Review at the Macassar Sport Ground. So if you want to watch Macassar take on Easter Review, and that's a derby match for you as well. Both of those clubs are pretty close together. Um, Malta Park sees Silver Tree take on Stellenbosch Coronations uh, at an observatory. Get down there on the weekend. Strand United against Salarians. Oh, that's a derby match for you, Mr. H. Mm. Salarians, I know they've got Argentina and team with them next week, Monday. Yeah. Um, but I know Salarians are, are, are really, they're fired yeah. They've up. also signed all Rose. And they've also signed, and Morgan, you spoke to Rustin Constance today. They've, they've got this Argentine team coming out. Yeah, yeah, next week, uh, I think it's next week, Tuesday or Thursday. Monday? Or, yeah, ne or Monday. Yeah, yeah. They, play, they got a game against, are they playing an Argentinian touring side? So that should be interesting. They've got four games. Like I said, like Ashton said to me, they've got three games in seven ga in seven days. Yeah. So they're coming to get some re rapid recovery products. So they, yeah, they're there you see, of them. course, um, uh, the Asla jersey on the background there. Um, let's quickly look at some of the other fixtures. Borland, uh, B. Mark, tag on Rockland, Hamadiers and Raithby. Young Stars and Silver Leaf. First, Young Wesley's against Northerns. Blue Jets and Power Rangers, Violets and Atlantis. Uh, Caledonian Roses are up against Peninsula. Clutiesville and Whistling Wheels. The guys from Whistling Wheels, we saw them today and they are fired up and ready to go for the weekend. Morgan Newman, Fonso Bontes, and Mr. Herman Abrams, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank thank you. Good. Thank safe, uh, safe rugby this weekend for you? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Good one. Well. Bonte, big game yeah, for big you? One. Yes, every week's a big game. Congress and Laurel, so yeah, thank you as you come. Yeah, Mr. H, and we will see you at Newlands, uh, of course, at uh, the uh, club game and then at Newlands afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap from Cred Rugby TV. Nice to have you along. Managed to get there finally. Join us on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. And don't forget, keep tweeting on the weekend. Hash WP Club Rugby. Bye bye. <laughs>